You're watching the FirearmsChannel.com. Hi, I'm Max Martin for the Firearms Channel here inside the new Shooters World location at Peoria, Arizona. And with me is Phil Rue. Phil, you are the CEO. How are you doing today? Hey, real good. Thank you very much. Hey, I want to thank you so much for being our guest reviewer and talking about this particular rifle that's in your hand. This is the Mossberg 464 ZMB 3030 lever action rifle. Okay, that's a mouthful. The specs on the Mossberg 464 ZMB 3030 lever action rifle has a capacity of six, a twist rate of 1.10. The overall length is 32 inches, the approximate weight 6.5 pounds, and it has an MSRP of $563. But let me tell you, this is a really cool twist, a new twist on a classic design. This is not your father's rifle. A lot of things that are going on with this. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, it's definitely different than the uh, 3030 I had when I was uh, 15. Uh, but um, yeah, shooting it, uh, we took it out right out of the box, brand new. And uh, one of the, I guess, a few of the things that I really liked about it was. The, uh, the rear stock feature, you know, real similar to like, you know, an M4 style rifle. You could actually adjust it, you know, and, and get it to fit right and get the right, right reach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you were in a, an area where you've got, you know, cold weather, you could simply, you know, retract it a little bit and still have that same reach because of the thick clothing. So I really like that feature on it. Uh, the, you know, when we actually started firing this rifle, uh, the accuracy of it was amazing. We fired three rounds at 25 yards, unsupported. Uh, they were probably, you know, less than an inch, inch group. And then we kind of semi-benched it and shot another, uh, another six rounds just to get, get, a, get, a, get a feel for it. Uh, but I really like the ergonomics uh, of the rear stock area. Uh, unfortunately, they placed three Picatinny rails on the handguard, which, you know, after a while, you can kind of see my hand, uh, after about the first six rounds, it really started to dig in. Um, not quite sure what you would, what you would use Picatinny rail for on the forend where you actually need to, you know, grip onto the rifle. Uh, but um, that was really the only issue I had, had up front. The sights, uh, they're using a fiber optic sight and I really liked that. I was able to engage the target quickly, um, you know, shot after shot, and uh, no issues as far as, you know, the, the accuracy on the target with those either. I was, I was easy, I could easily identify my target and still use my sights. So, nice feature there. What about any cons? Were there anything that you thought, oh my goodness, tough to see? Well, Besides uh, the oddly placed Picatinny rail here, I, I, I would remove that if this was my rifle. Because, I mean, this is where I grip on. I'm not going to put a tactical light there. I'm not going to put a bipod of any, or a monopod of any sort. So this simply just needs to be removed. Or maybe the handguard uh, would need to be extended a little bit and place your Picatinny up there. But, um, but yeah, that would have to come off. And then, unfortunately, right out of the box, we had an issue with the feeding once we loaded the rounds into the tube went to chamber around and the actual rear of the casing got hung up on the feed ramps mm -hmm. and uh, we had you know to do the test we kind of had to jiggle the rounds up and actually get them into chamber mm -hmm. so we couldn't uh, uh, couldn't really cycle the rounds you know like like we wanted to but um, we were at least able to fire the firearm and, and, and test the rifle tell me about the the flash suppressor how do you think that uh, worked with regards to the use of this particular rifle well, one thing I noticed, this particular design over, of course, you know, my old 3030, uh, mine kicked like a mule. That flash hider did a really good job of keeping the muzzle down, and the felt recoil on this was, was very low. And I think I contribute that mostly to the rear stock design. Uh, a nice, comfortable butt plate, uh, rubberized butt plate. That absorbed some of it, I'm sure. And, of course, the muzzle brake helped keep the muzzle down so you didn't have that, that, uh, that muzzle flip. Now what about in terms of overall length? This particular one's 32 inches long. That's about six inches shorter than a typical 30-30 rifle. How did it feel that way? You know, lengthwise on a 30-30, I've never really been concerned about length. You know, if you were going to buy a rifle for you know your son's first hunt or you know someone in your family, a, a, a youth hunter, 
I think it would be uh, a great feature, you know, to point out because of the, you know, the shorter rifle is more compact. You're going through thick brush, real easy rifle to maneuver. Uh, when I was firing this, I actually shot it with the stock in the far, uh, farthest extended position. But I can see where you know, my son or my daughter would probably, you know, collapse it down into about the middle position. Um, but yeah, overall length, nice and compact. And uh, I can see where this would be a, a rifle that uh, you know, would fit a, a, a wide uh, range of, of hunters and shooters. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Phil Rue with Shooters World for the FirearmsChannel.com. I'm Max Martin. Thanks for watching. You're watching the FirearmsChannel.com.